Good morning. I'm Pastor Leslie Abrams. And I'm Marcia Soriano. And it's Sunday morning, the day we come together and gather virtually to worship God. Let us prepare to worship God. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Today I'm beginning a sermon series on what is called the six great ends of the church. It's the mission statement of our Presbyterian church and it succinctly synthesizes the purposes of our denomination. That is, who we are supposed to be. The six great ends of the church are calls to action, challenging us to step out of our routine ways of thinking about church. We call ourselves church because we do the things churches do. We pray and sing hymns. We carry out the sacraments. We hear the word preached and we offer our gifts for the work of this congregation and the church as a whole. We call ourselves church because we go out into the community and help those in need. We call ourselves church because we share this precious idea called God. But the truth is, we call ourselves church because God calls us to be church. And I think we lose sight of that from time to time. We come to church for lots of different reasons, out of gratitude or hope, out of a need for community or a need to serve, and even out of habit. But what about God's needs? This, that's where the six great ends of the church come in. You won't find them listed in the Bible, but just about every passage in its pages can be linked to one or more of these six goals. In Presbytery de Cristo, we recently started using the six great ends of the church to help churches thrive, to help them reclaim their identity as church. And it's not about getting more members or increasing the annual budget. It's about remembering what we already know. God has called us for a purpose, and it doesn't have anything to do with potlucks or stewardship campaigns. Because the church does not live for itself. It lives for God. Let us hear what God is saying to the church today from Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Jesus tells his disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. The first great end of the church is the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humanity. That is evangelism. I can hear you all now clicking off your computers, muttering, I can't tell strangers what to believe. I'm a Presbyterian. We do not go door to door with brochures in hand evangelizing. Well, just give me a chance to break down some of that, and it might be more appealing the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humanity. We are to proclaim. That is, we're invited to be intentional about sharing what we believe with others. This doesn't mean standing on a street corner and yelling at passers-by that their souls will be damned if they don't come to Jesus. It does mean sharing your own story about what faith in God has given you. It might be, my faith community is close and caring, or 
believer. Believing in Jesus has given me a moral touchstone for my life. Or I am comforted knowing God loves me. Or even sometimes I'm angry at God and I come to church to work that out. The proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humanity. We are to proclaim the gospel. That is, we're to share the good news about Jesus. Conventionally, the gospel good news is that Christ died for our sins and then was resurrected, assuring us eternal life. But perhaps your good news is different. Perhaps the teachings of Christ are what resonate for you. Perhaps Jesus has inspired you to give more thought to those in need or those on the margins. You need only share what is authentic for you, not what doctrine says or what your pastor preaches or the Bible verse your grandmother stitched on a needlepoint. The proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humanity. Well, I gotta say, saving humanity is a pretty big job. Are you supposed to handle it all yourself, buying a full page ad in the New York Times, proclaiming the good news of the gospel in order to reach as many people as possible? Well, sure, if you're really rich and really confident. But most of us will evangelize within existing relationships, inviting a neighbor to church or telling a friend about the struggles in your life that have been eased through faith. Saving humanity is a grassroots project with each of us doing our bit to get the good word out, each of us doing what we can to bring peace, hope, joy, and love to a broken world. The first great end of the church invites us to practice intentional, authentic, and relational evangelism from the heart, one-to-one, -one, and not by accident. Earlier in the book of Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings. And the fact is, in Jesus' time, you could be flogged and jailed and persecuted and eaten by lions if you claimed allegiance to Jesus. These days, the worst thing that can happen if you share your faith is that someone calls you a Jesus freak, unless you happen to be in China, or Syria, or the Sudan. I'd like to end our time today with a word about how blessed we are in the United States to be able to talk freely about our faith, freely and openly. All over the globe, government-sanctioned anti-Christian laws lead to Christians being harassed, imprisoned, or even killed because of their witness. In countries like Afghanistan or Colombia or Laos, Christians must hide their faith and cannot worship openly. Evangelism is forbidden and Bibles are only available through underground ministry networks. It is dangerous to be a Christian in many parts of the world. So let us bear witness to what God in Christ is doing in our hearts and minds. Let us proclaim the gospel for the salvation of humanity on behalf of all those who cannot proclaim or even whisper their own stories of faith. Billy Graham once said, prayer is the Christian's greatest weapon. So let us pray. Sovereign God, we know that your heart breaks for all those who suffer in your name. 
Help us grieve with you. Help us to remember those who are imprisoned for their faith. May they see that even though they remain captive, their chains have furthered the gospel and not frustrated it. God of comfort, for those who are tortured both in body and mind, give them the grace to endure and comfort them even as they walk through the valley. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would make us ever mindful of our brothers and sisters around the world who need us to stand with them as they suffer in your name. May they inspire and embolden us to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. Amen. Amen. Perhaps one of our greatest evangelical tools is the beautiful Christmas season and its music. And perhaps the greatest music of all is joy to the world. Have a very blessed week.